what's good guys so it is back in biceps today uh, like i mentioned in the video yesterday uh, or the training session yesterday um, i've had to kind of adjust my week's worth of training due to missing a day earlier in the week and um yeah today i'm actually training a little bit earlier than usual i mean normally i'm in the gym quite late at night but it's actually quarter to four in the afternoon so yeah, that should be uh, a bit more productive in this session. Seeing as it's not as close to bedtime, I should have a little bit of, a, I suppose, a higher performance or higher output in this training session. And yeah, starting off with the um, vertical pulls as usual. I like to always do my back training starting with a vertical pull. I think you just get more of a stretch, you get more blood flow to the actual muscle that you're trying to train. And it just primes you more for the actual training session ahead. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing like a horizontal pull, like a row, to start your session, but I just personally prefer to do it this way. Um, but yeah, narrow parallel grip pull down, now four sets of this, 15 to 20 reps, so higher rep day today for my back training, and then uh, onto some rear delts and some biceps, as usual. Um, so I switched the, the rear delt fly obviously to the high uh, upper back row, um, just because it I find you can load the rear delts with a lot more weight and uh, just cause more raw stimulus magnitude like in that, that muscle group. Um, whereas if you use like a reverse fly, like a pec deck and do the reverse fly on it, like, yeah, sure, you can isolate the, the rear delt more, but you can't expose that are subjected to as much load. And I think there's a little bit of a disadvantage to um, training your rear delts if you can only subject it to a certain amount of load. So yeah, I. I like to, to do some upper back kind of rowing where the arms are quite flared to just bias that, that rear delt a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I'll do that and then it'll be the, the bicep exercises that I usually do, the uh, Preacher and the Bayesian bicep curl. So yeah, time to get into it. Next for a rep. Last week I got 17, I think, for the first set, so I got 18 on that. Pretty happy with that. So it just occurred to me that I don't have a lot of uh, battery life to record this training session, so I'll probably have to limit my recording to just two sets of each exercise so that the battery doesn't die before the session's over, so I can at least show you a little bit of everything from today. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty stacked day today. Even though it is the weekend, like a Saturday for me, and I don't do any like client check-ins or any work of that sort on Saturdays, without, obviously, with the exception, of course, of contest prep, if I have clients competing on weekends, and I will work on weekends, but that's the only exception to the rule. But because I don't have any clients competing this weekend, it's a, a work-free weekend, but I've still got other work to do. Obviously, I still do the video editing for, for these videos when I upload them. Um, I've got a podcast tonight, just uh, the usual bro chat with um, Paul Barnett and the other other guys on uh, anabolic bodybuilding. So that's at 11, uh, my time. And partner and I, we're also planning on going out for a bit of a date night tonight. So go out, get something to eat, an off-plan, untracked meal. I always allow myself at least one untracked meal a week on the, the off-season. And uh, it's totally fine with my coach as well. So yeah. Um, that's kind of like the plan of action. I've also got to get to a shopping mall today if I have the time with a friend of mine, uh, pick up some shoes, 
because of the size of my feet in Thailand, it's really hard to find shoes that fit because I've got size 13 US feet. So I have to go on a little bit of an adventure, a cross country tour, a, um, a specific shopping mall that tends to cater for bigger feet. So um, yeah, that'll be the plan of action. I may or may not get a chance to do that. If I don't, I'll just have to message my mate and tell him to go without me. But um, yeah, if all the stars align today, shopping mall, get some new shoes, date night, and then back home in time for the uh, podcast with uh, Paul and the boys. Time to do set number two though. As soon as I got three sets of 15, no, four, four sets of 15 on this. Last week with uh, plate number nine, I'll go up to plate number 10 today. See if I can punch out at least 10 on each set. It just occurred to me, I'm gonna to have to rotate this exercise out for something different soon um, because I am getting close to matching the, the machine out and I don't wanna risk loading up another plate each side. I think it'll fall off through the movement. So I'll probably only have this in for the rest of this block and then rotate a different movement in to replace it. Similar, um, like mechanics wise, but just a different exercise, maybe a pin loaded machine if I can find one that's heavy enough here. But uh, this just is not gonna be um, sustainable long term, like there's not going to be much long, much more longevity in this exercise. That's what I kind of mean. Oh. had a bit of a chat with the guy that uh, stopped me to send. A guy named Roberto He's from uh, Italy. And he said that uh, I have a good back, which was uh, it's a nice compliment. But yeah, uh, well, it's something that I've noticed about this gym over here. Um, people stop me to 
like compliment me, which is different. Like I'm not used to it. So yeah, it's interesting. Anyhow, set them to. So onto the final row variation, which is technically my rear delt work for this session, and also a little bit more upper back work if you kind of look at it rationally from the, the movement perspective. Um, but I've got four, so it might be five, but I have to double check, four or five working sets of this, uh, 15 to 20 reps. And um, I'm going up a, a plate from last week. So last week I did 90 pound, I do 100 pound today. And, uh, with this, I'm really just focusing on getting a good contraction at the, the end or the back of each rep, controlling the, the descent or the eccentric back to the starting position at the front and getting a decent stretch there too. But uh, I'm limited to how much of a stretch I can get due to the, uh, the movement, due to the exercise and the machine and how it's built. So if I were to get like a full stretch, I'd probably end up touching the plates back on the stack, which I don't want to do. I want to keep the load and the tension on the muscles of the entire set. So I have to kind of shorten the stretch a little bit. So I'm not getting like a full stretch, full reach at the, the front of each rep, but I'm getting a bit of a stretch. So yeah, definitely focusing a little bit more on the peak contraction in these and just really exposing the rear delts to more load because unlike a, a reverse fly where you, yeah, you emphasize and I suppose take out a lot of the other body parts more effectively and, and just really hone in on the rear delts, you're not able to um, subject the rear delts to as much load due to that fact. Because uh, obviously if you've got other muscles contributing to the, the lift or the movement, you're going to be able to use heavier loads, use more weight. And yeah, sure, you might make the argument, well, there's more muscles involved, so that's not really going to stimulate the redox more, but I would argue it actually does. Um, yeah, let's do it. Just going to set the uh, chest pad so I get a decent stretch. Forgot to mention they're also rep match sets. So I got 17 on the first one at 100 pound. That means I need to get 17 at 100 pound on every single work set. I sound like a broken record because I say that every session, but some people this might be their first time viewing this training session of mine. So yeah. Now 
given that I've got five sets of this, whereas every other exercise is three to four, I might as well film three sets of this. So you get a good feel for how my, I suppose, working sets progress as the volume kind of continues. It's like the first set's always gonna look fresh. Second set, yeah, pretty fresh. Third set, uh, starting to look a little bit like sketchy. And yeah, obviously, in order to maintain technical proficiency, hold your form together, keep your technique, as you do more and more working sets on an exercise, you're gonna lose repetition. So it's just a, I suppose, a good uh, indicator of my fatigue. Like you watch me do this set, I'll probably have to do a rest pause interval after the first like 12 to 14 reps before I can punch out the remaining few reps to get the, the total 17 that I need to get. So, um, yeah. Whereas the last two sets, I didn't have to rest pause. Uh, sort of, kind of like half assed rest pause on the 16th rep of that, that set just before, but yeah. Rest fatigue accumulates from working set to working set. Um, your fitness or your ability to like exert yourself, like your performance will be further masked from that fatigue. So you're not gonna be able to do as many reps um, without having a momentary pause to kind of like reset, allow yourself to kind of partially recover before you continue the set. Um, and that's just the byproduct of hard training. If you're not training hard, you're not going to run into that issue. But if you're not running into that issue, you should be worried because you're probably not training hard enough. Yeah. So I've literally got 7% battery life left. I've got four sets of this, four sets of the, uh, the Bayesian curls as well. So uh, I'll just record one set of this and one set of the Bayesian curls and hopefully I'll have enough battery space for that. Um, or battery life, I should say. Yeah, if I try to do more than one set of either of these exercises, I don't think I'll get the full session in or at least a bit of the full session. So yeah, set number one. Same weight as last week, 55 kilo. About 18 reps for all of the rep max sets at uh, 55 kilo last week. So do 55 again. Aim for 19. But if not, I'll, I'll happily settle for four sets of 18 again. As long as I don't go backwards, I'm going forwards. I got 19. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't get 19 because it's going to be really hard uh, to, to match those reps, but I got it, so I've got to nut up and shut up and do it now. So, yeah, three more sets, 19 reps, 55 kilo, then on to Bayesian curls for uh, four sets of that. 
same way as the other week as well. I'll be doing 35 kilo on the Bayesians and uh, just aiming for a rep PB if I can. Same as last week. Four sets of 12 to 15, 35 kilo. But I only record one because battery's about to die. Another three sets of 14. All right, so my battery is blessing me with the opportunity to record one more working set. So I'm gonna seize that opportunity. And then that'll be the end of this video, most likely, if I even get the full set recorded, that is. Oh. <sighs> 